Please answer the very important question at the end of this video. Mark and Paulette here, the two travelers in Mexico, and um, we are joined by Donner and Blitzen back here behind Paulette. <laughs> Uh, Rudolph couldn't make it for whatever reason. Um, he had another engagement. Yeah. So today we're going to talk to you about um, a lot of the questions that we've been receiving lately on our videos. And so we're going to try to answer those questions. Well, I think it was on the one video where we talked about our four years here in Mexico. Yeah. That's where most of the questions came in. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to get started. And our neighbor on the other side is working, I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing some banging with the hang, uh, hammer. So we might have to do some cuts in between to get that sound out of the video. Ah, uh, the joys of having a shared wall. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so one of the questions that we have, it's from two people, um, Padran Padranco, is that how you said that, Padranco? Realty in San Antonio, Texas. And I, I would say it Arapax, but how would you say it? Every area packs. Forgive us if we mispronounce your names. Yeah. YouTube does some weird things with, with names, so we're And so do fine. we. Yeah. <laughs> Not just YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so here's the question. Um, because your questions were pretty close to the same. Uh, will you do a video on virtual mail for expats? How do expats with virtual mail get and receive their physical mail, credit cards, like state IDs, through a mailbox, post office box, um, post office? Mm -hmm. So you want to take that one because you were the one that you take care of it now, but we set it up yeah. when we were in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So we have a... Um what's called a PMB box in South Dakota. It's basically like a post office box. And all of our mail goes there. Um, and in our plan, they scan the outside of the envelope. They don't open them. They don't open it. Um, and, then I, and then I can look at the envelope online to scan image and then decide whether I want them to scan the contents of the envelope. Because you have a code, you set up a code yeah. to do that. Yeah. And so, um, if I want some the whatever is inside the envelope scan, I can request it to be scanned. How do you then, do that? Uh, it's just through I send a scan request to them. Okay. It's right on the page, um, and then a couple of days later, I can actually view the document. And from there, I can keep it, print it out, tell them that uh, shred it, shred it, or whatever I want to do. Um, Credit cards, uh, we recently had our Charles Schwab, they sent us our new credit card because ours had expired automatically to the South Dakota address. Um, so we actually just called Schwab and then they canceled that and then they sent us a new one here to Mexico. Well, actually we didn't know that they had sent it to South yeah. Dakota. We called them because Mark realized that it had expired. So I called them. Mm -hmm and they told me we'd send it to your South Dakota um, address. Right. So then of course, at that point, we don't need it. So we just have them mm -hmm. shred it uh, at the mailbox forwarding company. And who is it that we use? Uh, America's Mailbox in yeah. South Dakota. Yeah. Um, and so they just had our, they sent us our credit card that arrived in a couple of days, our Schwab card. Yeah. Uh, but we've done that with our other credit cards, too. Um, sometimes we've actually had to pay for it. The Schwab one they sent for free. We had another card um, that we had to end up having it sent like three times because it never made it to us and stuff. And so remember when we were in Huatuco? Yeah. During Christmas yeah. time? Yeah. And uh, they said, oh, we sent it out. We waited like a week, we never mm -hmm. got it, so they canceled it, did it again, never got it, canceled it, and did it again. Right. And um, that was, I think, our, um, like a MasterCard. Yeah. I think that one was a MasterCard. Um, and very important, I always ask that they either use a service like FedEx or DHL um, 
or one of those types of services here because if they're sending it through uh, regular mail in Mexico, it might arrive at your house. Good luck. Five months later, it might not arrive at all. So try to use one of those right. services. And some companies may do that. Charles Schwab said they automatically do that because yeah. we told them we would pay for the extra fee to have mm -hmm. it shipped here and they said, oh, not a problem. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answered your question on that. Um, we have another one here. You want me just to read them all? Can you read my writing okay? Yeah. I know it's better than yours. <laughs> That's a matter of opinion. Mark should have been a doctor. <laughs> Scribble. Um, Annie Shenanigans. Do you have allergies in Mexico or when you were in the U.S.? Uh, she says that she has allergies in Florida and is hoping to find a place where this will be relieved. I have watched numerous videos from all sorts of people and countries, and it's pretty hard finding any information on this. We do not have allergies. However, I will say that some of the people that we've come across have had allergies in the U.S. that don't have them here, and a lot of them are attributed to the food in the U.S. Mm -hmm. versus the food here. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, probably... On average, I think the food is more highly processed in the U.S., and so that might be a contributing factor. And who factor. knows, sprayed with what, yeah. right, when they get it? Because I've seen videos on that, like where they've got all the fruits and stuff like that, and they just, like, spray it with Lord knows what before it comes into the U.S. So mm -hmm. I don't know. but So that's good news, right? Some people don't have the issue that yeah. are here now in Mexico. Yeah. So hopefully, if you come here, you'll be one of those people that won't have an issue with allergies anymore either. Uh, okay, next question is from BYRW and uh, Pedroza Travel. Okay, they're both pretty much the same one. Mm -hmm. Do you have dual citizenship? And would you ever consider getting citizenship? Uh, we do not have dual citizenship. We have talked a little bit about getting citizenship here he has in Mexico um, for a couple of reasons number one if you're a citizen of Mexico you can get a lifetime driver driver's license and you get a Me Mexico passport it would also enable you to vote too if you chose to vote here but I don't know enough about the politics here yet to really consider voting on that um, what was the other thing I was going to say something? Oh, it, there's like a test, right? Isn't there a test for some people, I think, that are under the age of 60 that have to do a written test? In Spanish. In Spanish. And we've heard, Mark hasn't looked into it yet, um, if that is not required when you're over 60. Yeah. So we don't really have the answer for that yet. He's thinking about it. For me, it doesn't really matter, but what the hey, hey, maybe, mm -hmm. right? Okay, next is uh, Biking Mama. What made you choose San Luis Potosí? And of all the states that you visited in Mexico, what are your top three favorites? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what made us choose San Luis Potosí? Um, it was, it wasn't anything specific, I would say. It was just, um, we, It was you, know, you more so. Right. But we, we came here, we passed through, we visited for like one day when we're back, on our way back to the U.S. And mm -hmm. something about the city said, you know, we got to go back and check that out more thoroughly. So on our way back, we did. And it was just uh, a number of things, really. The friendliness of the people, the architecture. Of course, we always say that. Um, and, and we was, had been living in Morelia. Yeah. But it was just an overall feeling that we have um, that, about the city itself. It was, you know, that's what draws to it. And then so we came here after our lease ended in Morelia. We rented an apartment. Um, furnished. Furnished, yeah. And so at that point, you know, about six months into that lease, we decided we wanted to just to stay in San Luis permanently. Well, he had this feeling, he told me, that he felt that this was going to be 
where we were going to buy or stay or whatever, I, right? Yeah, I felt that we were going to be here long term. And this was when we were just in the process of moving here from Morelia. Right. And I thought he was crazy because we originally had to start out somewhere. It was either Carecaro or it was Morelia, flipped a coin. It was Morelia mm -hmm. for the first year. During that first year, we traveled to other places. And then when we were going to the U.S., we ended up stopping in San Luis Potosí, never really heard of it, and um, stopped again, like Mark said. Mm -hmm. We really liked it. And then because our lease was going to be up, we decided this was where we were going to move. And so yeah. we did. And uh, we had a rule that we broke. <laughs> uh, yeah. We were going to rent for the, uh, a year a furnished apartment um, and then see what we were going to do. But again, Mark had this feeling that this was going to be like where we were going to pretty much. Uh, That's the hammer. More neighbor tapping. <laughs> it's not a ghost. Yeah. I don't know what he's working on, but he's been doing this for the last three days. Um, so we went ahead and we broke our lease and found a place, looked at like, I don't know what we said, 32, 33 homes mm -hmm. and ended up buying a home. So we broke our commitment that we had and certainly weren't planning on buying a house. Yeah. The Not land, that quickly anyhow. The, uh, the woman that we were renting from was pretty cool about it. We wound up paying just like an extra month's rent or something to, to break the lease. So. And that'll happen a lot. People yeah. always worry about that. But um, yeah, if you tell them, you know, that you need to get out or whatever, you know, you're going to be moving or buying or whatever, mm -hmm. they're pretty good about just making you pay an extra month's rent. Uh, I can't say all landlords work that way, but I think the majority of them do, as long as you've got a good relationship. Yeah. So answer the second part of that question. Okay. Yeah. I almost forgot states. about that. Okay. What top three are our favorites that we visited? Um, that we visited? I would have... Uh, San Luis Potosi aside, because that's a given. Or, or what are yeah. your top three favorites? I would say... Oaxaca was a beautiful state. Um, I would say that I thought Durango was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, Hidalgo was a beautiful state. Um, so those would be my, my three. Mine would probably be, um, I liked Puebla. Yeah. I liked Durango. Uh, and um, Mark's right, Oaxaca is very nice. Um, I've also always put Querétaro up there with one of my favorites. We visited it, oh, I don't know, three, four times now. Yeah. Um, however, it is turning into an area like San Miguel, Ajijic, you're talking Lake about, Chapala. You're talking about the city of Querétaro and not the city. necessarily yeah, the whole Yeah, sorry, state. the city is turning in it's i think they're redoing a lot of it the overpasses and everything it's been a mess for over a year now yeah um driving through it um but it is a it is a great place too mm -hmm. uh so i don't know maybe Kadekado and oaxaca might be tied mm, i don't i don't mm, boy yeah those are those are probably mine yeah three kind of four Okay. Okay. Hap, uh, yes to happiness regarding IMSS. If you guys don't know what IMSS, IMSS, I almost said another S on it. It's the government insurance here mm -hmm. in Mexico. Um, and you can buy into that. Yeah. So just to let you know. So her question is, how hard was it to apply for? Did you use a facilitator where do you go and what is the process on dropping it? Uh, well, yes, the, when we first got it, we did use a facilitator to, to help us with it. Because um, at that time we were doing our, um, our visa too at the same time. Yeah. And she suggested about getting the IMS mm -hmm. insurance. So 
after she did our visa paperwork here for temporary residents, she started the process and helped us with the IMSS. Right. And so it took, I want to say, about three different trips mm -hmm. uh, to get the process complete. You go into like the, the IMSS business office and um, sign up for it. They give you some paperwork. They, I believe they also gave us a code to take to the bank where we then paid for that insurance and then we took the code back to the office it's like a paper that has yeah. their account number on it yeah. is what it is but they don't take the mm -hmm. payments there mm -hmm. you have to go to the bank mm -hmm. make the payment then the payment i mean then the bank gives you a receipt mm -hmm. then you have to take that back right. to the ims right. office however know this even though you're paying for it up front you can still be denied. Right. So keep that in mind. And they keep the money. Right. Too. Right. They keep um, the money. You lose it. There, there is. They, you do have to go get some basic blood work tests done and stuff like that to, you know, make sure that you're. That not, was the second appointment. The yeah. first we went there, then this, then we had to go to the bank. Then we had to come mm -hmm. back, and then they set up appointments for us for lab work mm -hmm. to make sure that we were healthy. Um. So where do you go? You go to IMSS. Mm -hmm. That's where you go to apply. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the interesting things is they ask you for, about pre-existing conditions. Um, you know, Paulette has had uh, thyroid surgery, and she's on medicine for that, um, which is a, a That was like, what, 20 years thing. ago? Yeah. Um, but they did not consider ago. thyroid condition a pre-existing condition, so that was not an issue. Or I didn't tell them. I can't remember. No, you told them. Did I? Yeah. Okay. And I remember they did, when we did the physical, they did uh, take our blood pressure like twice. Yeah. I remember that. Like they took it once mm -hmm. and then they asked you a bunch of questions and the doctor was checking things off. And then they took your blood pressure a second time. Yeah. That I remember. And that was all done in Moralia when mm -hmm. we were living there. Uh, and what is the process for dropping it? You just don't renew it. Yeah. You just don't pay your fee. Now, we did it the first year in Moralia, and then after Moralia, we moved to San Luis Potosí, and we were talking that it needed to be renewed, so we did it ourselves. Mm -hmm. We just went into, did we go into an IMSS? Was that what we that did. office we, was? Yeah, but we it wasn't like the hospital, was hospital, big facility. Right. No, it was just an office where they handle like the business administration end of it. Yeah, so we just went in yeah. there, and um, I forget what we needed now to present, probably like a CFE bill, which is your electric bill. Mm -hmm. Everybody always wants that yeah. for anything. Yeah. Um, passport, resident passport, card. Passport, probably a copy of our passport, our resident card, a copy of our resident mm -hmm. card. And then um, I think our little booklet that we had from IMSS. Right. And then they issued us a new booklet here because it was in a different state. And then we had to go to the bank also, right? Yeah. And pay? Yeah. Or did we do it there? I'm trying to remember. We went to the bank and paid. So we had to go that. to the bank again with the paperwork that they gave us with their account number, went to the bank, came back, showed them the receipt, mm -hmm. and then... We didn't have to do any labs or anything the second time when we renewed, did we? No. Our payment was a little bit more because we were a year older. Yeah. So, well, I do remember what we paid the first time. Oh, uh, no, not, not exactly. We would have to look it all up. Yeah. I've got all that stuff in a file cabinet. So, um, but it goes up as you get older, that I can tell you. And it wasn't too much more, maybe it was Fifty dollars more, or something like that. Yeah. Um, we did a video on that a long time ago, I think. We did on the IMSS, and we we said how much it was, how much it cost um, for your age. So right. look up that video. But that might have gone up over the years. Yeah, too. might have gone up over the years. But that was uh, I don't know what the video was even called. IMSS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you would do in canceling it. You just wouldn't bother to go in you wouldn't do anything and that's the end of that yeah so and we had it for two years 
We never used it. And after we renewed it and it expired that second year, we just didn't do anything mm -hmm. and we let it expire. So uh, then, okay. next part of the question is airlines. What airlines do we use? Mm -hmm. In Mexico? Uh, so far, I believe we've only used Aero Mexico. Yeah. You know, we mostly take the bus. Yeah. Um, but we used that when we went from San Luis Potosi to Huatuco. Right. And then we went from there, from there and it the was city of Oaxaca. From San stuff. Luis to Merida, which involved flying through Mexico City Airport, which was a... Disaster. Yeah. I hate Mexico City Airport myself. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the airline that we've used, Aero Mexico. But I think we've only flown twice. Three times. Three times? Yeah, because we flew from here to San Lu or, I mean, sorry, from Morelia to Los Mochis to go on the El Chepe train. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So three times, and I think it was all Aero Mexico. Yeah. Okay. And then she said, How do we find the hotels when we travel? What are our criteria for hotels? Well, the number one criteria is a king size bed because I'm <laughs> six foot five. So that eliminates a lot of hotels right there. That's right. Um, and it eliminates his feet hanging off the bed yeah. by a couple of feet. So far, the, the service that we mostly use is probably bookings.com, right? Yeah. And you know what? I will say that we do look for the king. If we can't find a king, we will settle for two queens. But, but we really shoot for a king size bed. Not saying I'm a queen. She might be a queen. <laughs> I am a queen. But yeah, if we can't find a king at all on the hotel that we want to stay at, um, I look at the reviews. I go to booking.com, hotel.com. Um, I usually use booking.com probably right. more so than hotel.com. Yeah. Um, and the other criteria is um, close to Central Historical. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's our criteria mm -hmm. that we use. Uh, you want to take the next one? Uh, the next one is from Terry, T-A-R-E-Y, and they just asked, where do we live in Mexico? Well, we live in the beautiful city and state of San Luis Potosí. Mm -hmm. And we live in the city of San Luis mm -hmm. Potosí. Okay, then we have another one from David. Sebastianali, Sebastianali, yeah. Mm -hmm. Banking, I understand to open an account, you are now required to have an RFC, even if you are not working in Mexico or collecting an income from Mexico sources. I forget which one, but I think it's either the RFC or SAT that everyone is now required to get. You wanna take that? Yeah, so the banking, when we first started out, we had- Nightmares. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but how, how we handle our money is that all of our money goes into a, our bank account in South Dakota. And then we set up an account with Charles Schwab. Schwab. Uh, and so we, when needed, we, we were transferring money from our South Dakota bank into Schwab, and then we were just using our Schwab ATM card mm -hmm. here in Mexico to get cash from ATMs. Um, and Schwab does not charge you for the transaction fees or right. foreign transaction fees either. Right. Um, and that solution has worked pretty well for us. We've also set up another thing where we have a, a WISE account that used to be called TransferWISE and we'll s transfer money into that account. And the good thing about that account is that you can just leave it in that account as US dollars it will tell you what the exchange rate is going to be on that given day. And then from there, if you feel like the exchange rate is good, you can then convert your U.S. dollars into pesos. Now, wait a minute. Are you charged when you do the transaction? Are you charged when we put it from our South Dakota bank into WISE? Do they charge you a fee then? They don't charge a fee then. Okay. They, there is a very small fee when you convert it. Okay. Um, but we've converted thousands of dollars and they've charged us like 80 pesos or something. Uh, and then from there with WISE, 
uh, you can leave it in there and then you can set up various pays if you want uh, in your WISE account and then just pay those people through your WISE account using the pesos that you now have. Well, we've transferred money from WISE into our Inacam right, Mexican bank that account that we have here now. Yeah. That's how we ended up. No, sorry, I was going to lie to you. That wasn't how we ended up buying our car. We just used WISE directly right. to the car dealer. Right. But we have. But we have transferred money into our bank account here. Yeah, We've transferred intercam. money from South Dakota into WISE, from WISE into our in account. Mm -hmm. so, so, but I don't even think that he was asking that question, all of that. But we gave yeah. him more information than you were asking. Yeah. But you were basically asking, um, you understand that opening an account that you're required to have an RFC, even if you're not working in Mexico or collecting an income. And then he says, I forget which one, but I think it's either RFC or SAT that uh, everyone is now required to have. Mm -hmm. They made it about a year or so ago that everyone over the age of 18 needed to have an RFC right. tracking number, right. <laughs> like a social security number. Yeah. Now, SAT is just the office that you go to, that it's right. the AT office to get your RFC. Right, so you go to the SAT um, office to apply for your RFC. Mm -hmm. So. Did we answer that with a lot more than you were asking? I think so. Okay, uh, next, Tom. If you could possibly compare the two uh, permanent residency cards, Mark is, Mark's is green, Paulette's is beige, what's the difference, holograms and markings? I'll show you a picture of the card coming up next so you can get a good idea of what the difference is. Basically, on the back, there are two, like a Paulette's card, there are two QR code things. Mine, there's only one. Uh, the design on the front is almost completely different, mm -hmm. including the color of the card. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of information here that was not asked, but talking about the permanent residency card. When I just got my driver's license, my driver's license is different than Mark's driver's license. Yeah. So why Mexico does that? They like changing things. Just, I don't know why, but they do. Every once in a while, they just change things up. Yeah, and I, I tend to think with the driver's license, it's like a state by state thing. They, maybe the, they design their own driver's licenses and stuff. But you got yours here in San Luis Potosi, and I got oh, mine. That's right. Good point. So yeah. throw that so one out. Throw that one out, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think Mexico just likes to surprise you and do different things and then go back to doing what they did before. Uh -huh. It's always interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the other thing that I wanted to say on this too, Tom, is that Ernie, if you've ever watched his retire life in Mexico, no bull. He'll stop in a minute. Okay. Um, retire life in Mexico, no bull. Ernie talked about that, about the, um, permanent residency cards, how they'd changed. And he doesn't think anybody is going to be required to have to go in and get the new card with the, um, the, the different- The updated information. Yeah, with the hologram yeah. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, and he said that if anything changes, he'll let people know. Yeah. So there you go on that. Okay, you want to take this one? The next question is from Tabithan. Hopefully I got that right. <laughs> what do you like about the area? What about your family and friends back in the US? Do you have any friends there? What do uh, we like about the area? The area in San Luis or Mexico in general? Not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll just ask, answer it for San Luis. We just, we just love, uh, Number one is always the people here first. Um, they're always well, so anywhere kind and generous in Mexico. and helpful. Yeah, that pretty much goes throughout Mexico. True. Um, again, we, lo we love our historical. It's very yeah. cool. It's, it's a big walking pedestrian area mm -hmm. of um, old historical... Um, buildings. Yeah, buildings. Yeah. That it's just, it's beautiful to walk around. Yeah. And whenever people come here, they're always surprised. I think they're just taken off guard of yeah. 
how pretty it is. I think the downtown central area, I've said this before in another video, is I think it reminds me of um, walking around uh, San Miguel de Allende. Yeah. With a lot of the old buildings. It's just an amazing feeling to be walking through history that's hundreds of years old, mm -hmm. you know. But our area is flat, yeah. just to let you know. Um, where the historical area is and stuff like that, mm -hmm. walking around and central and historical. San Miguel is um, not so flat. <clears throat> and it's got a lot of those cobblestone mm -hmm. streets um, walking around and narrower mm -hmm. sidewalks. Yeah. So, um, and do we have family and friends in the U.S.? We um, hope so. And let <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have family and friends in what the U.S. What about your friends and family in the U.S.? Do you have any? Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, <clears throat> it's been actually two years since we've gone back there. We're going back again next year yeah, for a month. Discounting the short trip we made to sell our car in Texas. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, we didn't. Um, yeah. But, you know, Paulette does video calls with her kids all the time. They call her. You mm -hmm. know, I talk my kids it's mostly like facebook chat and what have you but we we always stay in touch yeah so. and i do the same thing with um um my one sister i talk to yeah. her all the time we always facetime and you know that's what's so nice about facetime you can do that with mm -hmm. people anywhere mm -hmm. you know and you don't lose touch that way mm -hmm. which is really nice if you can't afford to fly back or whatever you know, yeah. like if you have a family, let's say in Switzerland, and you're living in Mexico, maybe you can't make that flight mm -hmm. back, right? So you can FaceTime a lot. And it, mm -hmm. it's like being there, but <clears throat> not. Yeah. Um, and then you asked about how is health care and the health insurance? It's fantastic here. You know, um, the uh, health, health insurance is pretty good, whether you go through Eames or do private health insurance. Um, or you just pay as you go. I mean, well, we never went through IMSS. No, we had the insurance. We had yeah, it. We didn't actually ever use we it. We also but. know some Mexican friends that can get IMSS, but they opt out for private insurance. Right. Um, so I think, I think private insurance... If you need something done, it's better to go through the private insurance mm -hmm. because I don't think it's as bad as Canada's health care, like where you got to mm -hmm. wait on a waiting list for, I don't know, three, four, five years, depending on what kind of surgery you need. Yeah. It's not like that at IMSS, but people always say that if you need something done, go through private insurance to get it done. You're going to pay more yeah. for sure. But the health care, the hospitals are like top notch here. Doctors, really yeah. good care, specialty doctors. Yeah. Um, you can go see a doctor see me. <laughs> um, at the Similaris pharmacies. Mm -hmm. Um, also, the Aora Pharmacy, yeah. there's usually a doctor's office attached, right. and it's really not that much. <clears throat> it's been a while since we've gone to one, but I yeah. think the last time it was 100 pesos, which is like five, yeah. five, six dollars, depending on where the peso is. I don't know what it's up to now, but it's right. very reasonable, and they take their time mm -hmm. with you. Right. And yeah, they do take a lot of time with you. It's not like five minutes you're in and out and are gone to see the next patient. They're, you know, they're, they're fully concentrating on you, asking mm -hmm. questions and stuff. Very thorough. They go in there, they'll spend 45 minutes talking to you, mm -hmm. um, discussing, you know, various aspects of your health care for whatever your issue might be. So, yeah, we're very pleased with mm -hmm. the health care mm -hmm. here. And then um, there's other people that have had um procedures mm -hmm. um you know undergoing treatment or whatever and they've been really happy right and for those of you who haven't who haven't watched our videos for a long time uh you i had. had prostate surgery here 
Mm -hmm. It was about a little bit less than $2,000 mm -hmm. out the door, including the surgeon the fee, the anesthesia, the overnight hospital stay. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, everything, you know, IV, all mm -hmm. that stuff after surgery. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in the room with him yeah. for the night. Um, and then our friend, uh, Kenny, hey, Kenny, um, he had back surgery here. Um, not uh, a planned thing, yeah. but he ended up having back surgery and then having to go to rehab for mm -hmm. about a week or two. And I think his whole thing because he ended up breaking his back here. Um, I think it ran him about, I want to say around 6,500 yeah. US dollars. US dollars for everything. Yeah, yeah. So. so, and I remember one person having hip surgery in Moralia, and I think it was 10,000 for the, mm -hmm. everything included rehab, yeah. doctors, house visits afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then another friend of mine that's in Puerto Vallarta, Leah, shout out. Um, she said that I think a friend of hers ended up paying, I want to say around, it was less than 10,000. I want to say maybe six, 7,000, maybe eight. I can't remember. Leah, leave a comment below. I can't remember what that amount was, but I know it was lower than the 10,000. For what kind of surgery? For um, a hip replacement. Oh, okay. I think it was a hip replacement. Or was yours a, did you tell me it was knee? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> okay, next we have Julie Shida. Did I say that? Shuda? How would you say her name? Julie Shida. Again, forgive us if we got it wrong. Um, um, do you use a dash cam? Uh, we do not currently. I'm kind of trying to talk Paulette into doing that just because I think it's a good idea. We've never been extorted, but <laughs> once <laughs> yeah. when we were going into Texas to mm -hmm. sell our car in September. Um, that was the only time in the four years that we've been here that, that something like that's happened. Yeah. When we've been pulled over many times at those stops, mm -hmm. um, you know, like immigration stops out right. on the street. But uh, that, a dash cam is good to have yeah. in case you're in some kind of an accident or something and you need to prove that you weren't at fault. Yeah, and Joe and Brittany from Chasing the American Dream, Yeah, he swears by having a dash mm -hmm. cam in the car, mm -hmm. so. Uh, and then she, her next question is, when we got our car insurance, was it in Spanish? Yep. Because we're in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, we could take our translator to it yeah. and convert it to English. Uh, then we have another question here from Bobby Beast. Uh, got my permanent card in Toronto last week. Do I need an appointment in Mexico to complete it or just walk in? Um, first of all, let me say you did not get your card in Toronto. What you got was a piece of paper that fit in your passport that mm -hmm. they stick in there that has a picture of your ID mm -hmm. um, approving you by the Mexican consulate. Mm -hmm. And you have, from the day that you're given that, you have 160. 180 days, six months to complete it here in Mexico. Right. You have, well, you have to cross the border in that 180 days. And once you do that, you've got 30 days to at least initiate the second part of that process. Is that what it is? I thought yeah. that you had six months to complete it. No, six months to cross the border and then 30 days to finish the process in whatever state you're going to. If we're wrong, consider. leave us a comment below. Yeah. Um, and then you say, can you just walk in or do you need an appointment? I'd say you probably need an appointment and you could probably do that online. However, you, when you were going to permanent, you walked in, turned in some paperwork. Well, I then, went there with Alex right. to then, find out what I needed. Right. So I did ask them um, that question. Right. I wanted to know what I needed. So we went to the office 
They gave us the information. They gave me some forms and then set up my appointment. And then we went back. Mm -hmm. So, but in order to do like when we came to Mexico and we got our facilitator in Morelia, um, we, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Hello, um, where was I going with this? I don't know, it's gone, the train's gone, it'll circle around again. I was just trying to think of all the stuff I was gonna say and then I lost the main question. So I would, I would set up an appointment or maybe go into the office and just ask them some questions. But I think you have to do it online for most of the offices. Mm -hmm in Mexico at the uh, INM office is where you're gonna go. Is that the last question? Last question. Okay. Do you want to take it? Yeah. Terrific no, Taylors. Terrific Taylor, sorry. Here, I'll, I'll read the questions. Taylors, yeah. Terrific Taylors. Uh, can you make a video about buying your house? Did you have an attorney? Uh, well, let's just, can you make a video about buying your house? We already did a video. We did right. a video on buying our house. So. We'll just talk about our process. Because you said, here. did you have an attorney? No, we, we, we did not. not. We didn't have an attorney, but we had a notario. We right. went to the notario's office uh -huh. that has years and years and years experience. And notarios, by the way, are attorneys. Right. Um, some people do recommend that you have your own attorney. Mm -hmm. um, but, we just went through a notario yeah. is what we did. and. Um, so that's what we did. And uh, did you trust the contractor? I did trust the contractor when we bought the house. The house was mm -hmm. already built. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody had lived here. Um, I trusted him and everything that um, he gave me prices to do, um, I wrote out like, uh, you know, like when I paid him and I made him sign it each time mm -hmm. um, that he was paid that dollar mm -hmm. amount and he would sign off on it. Right. That's how I did it. But I trusted him, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, later, after being in the house for two years, there's little things that we're finding that I think they took shortcuts, no supervision, yeah. um, terrible quality work yeah. in some aspects. Um, but I did trust mm -hmm. him. He seemed to be on the up and up um, I mean, we both felt pretty comfortable with him. Yeah, I mean, had I, I, I think if we were to do this all over again, though, I would probably just buy a plot of land and hire, uh, you know, an engineer to build mm -hmm. a house and, and stuff like that um, so that we could oversee the building of the house. This one was already constructed. It had been sitting for about a year when we bought it, but. Yeah, and we've run into issues. Yeah, if I were to do it again, I would probably buy a plot of land. And that was one thing we lot. were considering doing. Yeah. Is we were considering buying a lot. And then. And doing our own home. Building a house. Um, so. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay, and then you say, I hear a lot of people say that real estate agents and or contractors will sometimes take your money and run, especially being a foreigner. Mm, I don't know, obviously we did not experience that. No, but, but I have posted some things yeah. on our Facebook travel page where things were going on with like a cartel group in Puerto Vallarta area um, where they were extorting people, mm -hmm. like they were gonna be buying a condo or whatever mm -hmm and they extorted people to right. the fullest. I mean, their retirement money, really sad situation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how it was handled by the people. Did they just go through the builder, not go through an attorney, not go through a notario? Right. I don't know. So one of the jobs that the notario is responsible for is making sure the person selling you the property has the right to sell you the property. That's right, because yeah. it's been told before that people have been sold a property that they didn't have the right to sell, mm -hmm. which is not a good thing. Right. So they will go through all that. Right. 
and the notarius do charge you a fee, and this is very important, it, you as the buyer get to choose the notario. And that's important because the, the rates can any, be anywhere from 3%. The raise? Rates. Oh, rates. Can be anywhere from 3% to 10% of the cost of the house. And so obviously you want to try to find something closer to 3%. Right. And if they can. tell you, if the seller tells you you need to go through this notario, you don't have to. You can pick right. your own. That's, that's not true. So you can, you can say, no, I'm going to choose this notario. You mm -hmm. can ask around people, you know, friends, whatever, put it on Facebook, mm -hmm. tell them that you're buying a place. Who do they um, uh, suggest that you go through for a notario? Right. In fact, um, we, we used a notario that our friend Alan recommended for us, and he, he was very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very so. good. He spoke English, but of course he's got assistances in the office yeah. that helped us. Right. But everything goes through him. Right. Final, I mean, the final everything goes through him mm -hmm. and they have years and years of right. experience. And all of the transactions are handled through them too. So. All right. So that's a wrap. Yeah, I, right. think, I think that's it. If you guys have any other questions um, on anything, just leave comments below and we're happy to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Merry Christmas from the two travelers in Mexico. And we're going to be doing some traveling soon. So stay tuned right. for those videos. There'll be a couple of separate videos on our travel for Christmas and New Year's. If you like what we're doing, we hope that you'll consider subscribing to our channel. We also have a Facebook page where you have to answer two questions. Um, we have a couple of moderators on that page, so we don't let any riffraff come in, no Bitcoin stuff, no, you know, yeah. crap, no, no nasty comments, mm -hmm. none of that stuff that you'll find on some mm -hmm. um, Facebook pages on Mexico. So, as always, from the two travelers in Mexico. What she did. Bye, guys. Bye. Cats, why do we love them? They hear you calling them, and then they just look away.